This short video is about an event during World War II that I have long found both interesting and disturbing. During the Allied retaking of Ramri Island by the British and Indian forces, retreating Japanese soldiers were beset by giant saltwater crocodiles. As the fleeing Imperial Japanese soldiers waded through the mangroves, many were killed or succumbed to the fauna and flora of the swamps. And a great many were killed by crocodiles, drawn to the wounded and dying. It is perhaps helpful to start with a background to the Burma campaign. Burma, modern day Myanmar, was invaded by the Imperial Japanese forces in January of 1942. For the British, Burma was a lower priority front when compared to the Middle East and Germany. Whilst some operations were launched in Burma, the British were driven back to India, which was vital to the war front. It was not until late 1943 that the tides turned for the Allies. Air superiority, better military leadership, and the failed Japanese invasion of India in 1944 gave the Allies the opportunity to recapture Burma. Ramri Island was selected as a potential site for an airbase to continue the offensives into Burma. Thousands of Japanese soldiers defended Ramri Island, resulting in a significant force of Royal Marines and Indian soldiers being dispatched. On the 26th of January, Royal Marines landed on Chaduba Island, which is just off the southwest coast of Ramri Island, and they used it as the staging ground for the assault. On Ramri, the Japanese soldiers' garrison held firm. It wasn't until the 1st of February that the reinforcements from the 36th and 71st Indian Infantry Brigades arrived. Attempts to outflank a key Japanese stronghold were successful, leaving the 1,000 Japanese defenders in a difficult position. Rather than face capture or a futile fight, the garrison decided to retreat and regroup with another battalion on Ramri Island. But there was an issue. The only route to take would be through a 10-mile trek through a mangrove swamp. Rather than pursue the Japanese through the swamps, Allied forces remained on their boats and kept as close a watch as possible. They were not willing to risk their dangerous terrain, brave the mosquitoes, nor the larger beasts that dwelled in the mangroves. According to Bruce Wright, an early proponent of the use of frogmen divers in warfare, the Japanese soldiers suffered greatly at night. He is quoted as saying, that night of the 19th of February 1945 was the most horrible that any member of the motor launch crews ever experienced. The scattered rifle shots in a pitch black swamp, punctured by the screams of wounded men crushed in the jaws of huge reptiles, and the blurred worrying sounds of spinning crocodiles that made a cacophony of hell that has rarely been duplicated on earth. At dawn, vultures had arrived to clean up what the crocodiles had left. Of about 1,000 Japanese soldiers that entered the swamps, only about 20 were found alive. It's important to point out that the saltwater crocodiles that occupied the swamps are the largest reptiles in the world. It was not uncommon for adult males to be 17 feet long and weigh over 1,000 pounds. In the mangrove swamps, their speed and power are unmatched. The bite of a saltwater crocodile has been confirmed to have the largest force ever recorded for an animal in a laboratory setting, being a staggering 3,690 pounds of force. It's fair to say that facing such an animal would be a daunting prospect. It was not just Wright who stated that such crocodiles preyed upon the Japanese soldiers. The 20 Japanese soldiers who made it out alive were captured. They recounted to their British captors the attacks carried out by the crocodiles, though they were unable to state just how many were killed. Whilst this event has been described as the worst case of animal attacks on humans, there are many who doubt the veracity of the claim that hundreds died to the crocodiles alone. Japanese soldiers, many already injured, would have died from dehydration or exhaustion. 
The smaller creatures, such as mosquitoes, spiders and venomous snakes, would have posed as great a threat. It is almost a certainty that the more outlandish claims of hundreds or thousands of crocodiles descending on the Japanese are exaggerations. It is more likely that some Japanese soldiers fell prey to the crocodiles, drawn to the blooded soldiers traipsing through the swamps, but not all of the dead can be attributed to the crocodiles. There is something about the tale of Ramri Island that sparks great interest. Perhaps it is the tale of man versus nature, or the determination of the Japanese soldiers to face such horrors rather than surrender. Perhaps the allure is that the story feels fictitious, but is also entirely plausible, whilst being beyond comprehension and utterly terrifying.